I think I I don't think he was a policy maker. I think he definitely was an idealogue who had ideas and in the end affected policy because Hugo Kalantai, who was the Thomas Paine of Poland, who was a policy maker, uh, he became friends with Hugo Kalantai and told Hugo Kalantai about things he learned in the American Revolution. So he was too idealistic. A policy maker is somebody who has to roll up his sleeves and go into the Senate and convince all the senators to go along and create this policy. So I think there's a difference between a policy maker and an ideologue who can affect policy. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes. The statue in Detroit, in Detroit which I guess we saw in the last day, of course, very well. Of course. But I found the most interesting part of his book to be when he returns to Poland to lead the army. But Poland is kind of its own worst enemy. There are all these factions on support of the Russian it essentially doesn't stand a chance because Poland can't get its, who can't get its act together uh, to, to support it. Uh, maybe you can I agree with everything you just said. <laughs> um, for those of you who didn't hear, it said Poland was in part its own enemy, worst enemy, because there were these different factions, and um, he couldn't get everybody to follow him. He couldn't get the nobility to follow him, for example, because it was the same thing as the slave owners in the South. They didn't want to give up the service. Uh, they didn't want to give up the source of free labor. The Catholic Church also owned serfs. They had their own slaves. They didn't want to give up their serfs because the priests would have to go out and pull the plow themselves. So he didn't have all these groups uh, supporting him. To a certain extent, it was the disenfranchised that followed him and led, the people that were trying to earn their freedom. But the richest people, most of them didn't. The Czartoryski family, which was one of the richest families in Poland, backed him, and some of the noble families backed him, but not all of them did. So, excuse me, I agree totally that Poland at times is its worst, its own worst enemy. Yes, so. Um, did you, you track also the influences that first made and they did come from the same people. Yes. So, did you track that? I did try and find if Kostyushko had ever met Polanski. Uh, I'm not aware, I mean, I read every book I could find about him. I read every letter I could find that was written by Kostyushko, to Kostyushko, that mentioned Kostyushko. And uh, Kostyushko, I don't think, ever made it as far as Savannah. And Kostyushko was at West Point when Polanski was killed in Savannah. Uh, there is a historian named Mieczysław Heyman who wrote in the 1940s that it's possible that Kostyushko met Pulaski when he was riding down from Albany, New York, through Pennsylvania at Valley Forge. So their paths crossed there, but did they ever actually meet? I was not able to find any evidence that they did, and I'm not aware of anyone else who has ever able to find that. Yes. Uh, so he died in America, and his remains were brought to Poland. He died um, after the revolution. He stayed uh, in France. He stayed in he stayed in uh, in uh, France for 15 years, uh, and then ended up living the last two years of life in Switzerland. And he died in his, uh, he died in Switzerland. In his, uh, he was about 71. So, uh, and as far as his remains go, his remains were um, were buried first in Switzerland, and his heart was removed, and after Poland regained its freedom, after World War I, his heart was sent back to Poland. Anybody else? No? All right, in that case, thank you very much for coming.